Hey everybody, Eric Kasloff here, and I just want to welcome you to the Something Something podcast and the return of the Something About the Unknown podcast. Hope you enjoy. You know, as someone who makes horror movies, that's my go-to thing, and even the cozy horror stuff that I like to call it, um, mm-hmm. I really wanted the show to come back in an awesome way, so I started looking for guests. And one that popped up and immediately was like, okay, they're a podcaster. I listened to the podcast, loved it immediately because of the unique way that it's done. First off, it reminded me of one of my favorite podcasts, the Anything Ghost podcast. So that pulled me. And then there's the two unique things about it. And then I was like, you know what? We got to have this person on the show. So everybody, please welcome Jennifer. I cannot remember your last name, but welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. Thank you so much for the kind words, too. I meant every last one of them. Yes, you are uh, absolutely awesome. I can't wait for this conversation. We haven't. We haven't talked to paranormal or any mediums since our last show. And um, I am so interested and enthralled um, because, you know, we we have a very good friend who's a medium. And um, it's always interesting to me how how you became a medium or how how you got do you ever is that one of the things do you ever start to become a medium (laughs) yeah that's a really good question first let's not leave the listeners hanging the name of my podcast is i talk to ghosts oh yes yeah and uh i know we're all excited to like talk about ghosts yes yeah Um, yes yeah your question about how does one become a medium are you always a medium I really do think that all of us as human beings with our nervous systems and how our physiology is, that we all have the capacity to do this, um, to have intuitive skills, to practice clairvoyance or clairaudience, any of the metaphysical things that people feel that You hear the story a lot like, oh, I knew as a child when I saw Mm. spirits in my room, you know, and they're like, oh, if I don't have that, I must not have it. But uh, mediumship is a very subtle art and it's about quieting all of your senses and opening up the space so that you can connect, so that you can blend with other energies. So was I going out of my way to do that at a young age? No. Do I consider myself always having strange knowings and things like that? Yeah, definitely. I felt as if everyone operated on the level of, oh, of course, if someone walks into the room, you sense what they're feeling as if it's your own. Oh, if if someone is think lying, you know, if some, or if someone is thinking this or, you know, <laughs> you tend to pick up on these subtle energies and it might be dominant and stronger in others, but I think it's always there. And it's a matter of what we give our attention and time to. The way when it comes to stuff like this, I always like to think about it as turning the radio station. Some people are born, I feel, with immediately connecting to the station. Then there's other people when you're turning the knob, you might get something here or there. But then there's people like you who I feel are called to something like this. Yeah, perhaps. Yeah, you know, I I wouldn't argue against that. Um, I've always had an interest in the paranormal, in what you consider witchy things, um, just esoteric um, ideology, and that there's more to this world than just the material to what we mm-hmm. see. Um, because to me, if it is just what you see is what you get, 
I think that gets lonely and cold and small really quick. But if there's something I can't explain or I can't understand, um, that's just fantastic. It's like, great. It's big. It's wondrous. I may never know. And I'm okay with that. But there's things that I just don't understand. And I think that's great. That's amazing. And, you know, I think you kind of like, like explain it almost in the simplest terms because i'm looking at your website which by the way is i talk to ghost.com um you you say that that you saw your first ghost at age two mm -hmm. and and it it goes on to say from there uh i've encountered ghosts all my life and while developing my div divination mm -hmm. div Oh, okay. Divination. Good. Mm -hmm. Divination. Um, uh, it's uh, the talents and energies and healing work. I unexpectedly met more spirits. And then I realized, why wasn't I talking back? Yeah. That it's not a one way conversation. And so is that in the simplest of terms, what really a medium is, is being able to 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 talk and and communicate with the other side with ghosts mm -hmm. the way i see it i have a very logical brain i love to analyze everything i'm not just my brain can't handle just oh trust in it right i'm like i want to know the how i want to know the why and the way i've settled on it is we're all energy right when we break it down yeah. And where does energy meet the body? Our nervous system. And normally we're using our nervous system to navigate this physical world. We're moving our body. We're feeling things. We're seeing things. We're using our mind's eye to daydream, to plan next week, to go over conversations that we hated months ago. You know, uh, we're using our ears. We're using our our sense of smell and our sense of taste. So we're busy living our loud life. But right. on an energy level, and I believe this comes through meditation, if you practice quieting yourself, opening the space with intention, kind of flinging your energy out there a bit so that it can be blended with for a specific intention, it's almost like I'm not using my mind's eye right now. Go ahead and pop something in there. I'm not using my uh, sense of emotion right now, go ahead and communicate with me that way, blend with me. Mm. And through that, you also have to learn through meditation, what your own thoughts feel like, what your own energy feels like. So that when something does come in, you don't necessarily think, oh, is that my imagination? Am I imagining it? You know, um, we tend to think that it's so mysterious. Like our third eye is so mysterious. It's like picture an apple in your head right now. Can you see it? That's your third eye. That's your mind's eye. You're using it all the time. It's not this mystical, unattainable thing. So when I do medium work, it's just allowing a spirit to come in however they want to express themselves. Sometimes it's very emotional. Sometimes they're really good at giving me those mind's eye images. Sometimes I'll hear a specific word. And I think it's really neat when all of a sudden I smell something or all of a sudden I have this taste in my mouth. It's mm. just crazy because it's like, it's really happened. Like, why am I smelling gingerbread? And then when it has a connection to the person I'm doing the reading for, it's like, wow, I don't have a connection to gingerbread, but you do. And it's just further proof. Um, it's just really fascinating to me how it all breaks down simply, but uh, it's not easy. It's not easy. You know, it's, it's hard to quiet the mind. It's, it's hard to uh, open up that trust and faith and then to offer that information to someone you don't know who could see you falling on your face if you're wrong, you know, but it's, it's all part of it. You know, that trust and that faith is definitely a component in there as well. Wow. Wow. <laughs> how, how easy or difficult is it 
when you start communicating, I mean, is it, is it like a clear, and this is okay. Like, you know, everybody, we all watch like, you know, like the ghost, like ghost hunters and all Mm -hmm. that. And, and is it, is it as simple as that? Or is it more complicated in a way as, as being a medium for you? Is it, is it like, and this may be a weird question. So sorry if you're like, man, come on. Um, But is it, is it like a conversation that they are talking like complete sentences? I, I hear what you're saying. I think that is the perception of mediumship that all of a sudden there's a spirit next to me and <laughs> it's like, they're talking to me on the phone. Right. It, right, right. I couldn't tell you that they're communicating to me in English. I have done readings for people who never learned English. Wow. Um, and um, it's, I heard it explained once. It's like a game of charades, telephone and Pictionary. Oh, and the senses all that at once like, yeah. Well, it depends. Every reading is different. Um, the the person I'm reading for, they're called my sitter. Their energy is a big component of this. My energy that day is a good big component of this. The spirit world that is coming close, their energy is a big component. And when those three things blend, it's going to be this unique recipe, this unique com- combination of things. And I I like to think that, you know, we don't jive with everyone we meet. Some people we click so well and, and the conversations are easy or you just can kind of anticipate even, and you feel like, yeah, we're, we're there, we're vibing, we're, we're communicating well. And I think that some spirits, maybe they're better at the visuals or maybe they're better at like they were really an emotive person so they can convey their emotions really well um every reading is just very different and another part of my job as a medium is to not dictate what it's going to look like or how it's going to come through personally i love the visuals i love being able to see something um but because to me it's like ah bam I got it uh but sometimes that doesn't happen maybe it's more messages and conversational uh the first thing I usually start with is personality I want to feel this person's uh personality and uh emotions that they want to convey and it usually comes through with that first and I'm like okay I'll start working with this but um it's not like having them right there on the phone I've seen uh, videos of some mediums working like that and but they've been working for like 50 years so it's like maybe that's something that's attainable someday I certainly try to reach and grow every reading and in between readings too but it, it is a very subtle art it'll come through my nervous system and I'll feel a feeling I'll see something in my mind maybe I'll hear a word every once in a while um, like uh, reading a couple weeks ago, I was like, what'd you do for a living? And um, he said, machinist. And I'm like, I don't even know what a machinist is, but okay. <laughs> and, and, it, and it was correct. And I love that when that happens, um, that's one of the other things about mediumship. You don't want to keep readings vague. Uh, everyone has a grandmother who baked, you know, um, when when anyone can take that information Yes, it's a good place to start, but, you know, get more granular, get more into, you know, details of life, little specifics that come through that if, you know, I, I held it up to your map of what you know, it all lines up. But if I hold it up to someone else, including myself, it doesn't line up. And it's like, ah, yeah. you know, now, you know, you, you're getting somewhere. Wow. Wow. That's so fascinating. Isn't so it? I just- Yes. It really is. I just want to know what was it like growing up when you were a child? Oh, because yeah. I do feel that as children and animals, the veil between the supernatural and natural doesn't exist. Because mm-hmm. you know, kids don't know yet what you're supposed to see and not supposed to see. 
I believe that when my dog, when I'm walking Steve Rogers and he doesn't want to go around the corner, yes, yeah, something's probably there. So as a kid, like, were you, I have a, a friend of mine told me once how she had this friend who lived next door and she didn't know she was a spirit. Was there anything like that growing up and especially in high school? Cause do you, are you an empath also? Cause I, yeah. what is it like being an empath in high school? You know, <laughs> that's a really great question. Um, as far as my childhood with spirits, I, I had a handful of unexplainable moments, um, you know, visions of, oh my gosh, I saw this happening and then it happened and trying to explain it to my parents when I was like five, nothing like every day is something extraordinary in Hollywood, you know, but growing up an empath that's really where my focus kind of was because you're always getting so much information from people. It's just rolling through you. And because of that, I just grew up painfully shy, paralyzingly shy because it was just so much to always be inundated with that. And, you know, there's talk of shutting it off. I've never really been good at that. I, you know, I have this little dimmer switch in my brain, but normally now it's just got to support myself before, got to support myself during, got to support myself after any kind of event. So, but as a kid, first you think everyone feels this way. Everyone is getting this input. We're just not talking about it. And then the other thing was there wasn't anything to guide me. Or, or help me cope. It just kind of, this is how the world works. And uh, it's loud and messy and uh, hard to navigate and uh, hold on to sometimes. Um, so yeah, that was, that was my experience growing up. <laughs> Gosh, how do you, wow. And especially as an empath. And I think, I think, that's where you kind of feel things, right? When you're around other mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. And um, I think like I can confidently say, I think I'm kind of like that as well. Um, and I don't necessarily like it, although yeah. it serves me maybe when, when I, that's your, is that, is that like an intuition thing too, or no? Well, when we think intuition, we kind of think perhaps you're, you know, something without getting any tangible data on it first, mm -hmm. right? Like you just mm -hmm. know, like say you've never met the person before, but you have an inkling of how they're going to be and what, what it's going to be like, mm -hmm. you know, and that's, that can be like, are you flinging your energy out there a little bit more and casting a net or are mm -hmm. you kind of predicting and not really knowing or is a spirit guy telling you yeah. you know how it is you just yeah. don't know where you're getting this information from so yeah i consider um being an empath just you you feel everyone else's emotions as if they're yours and if you mm -hmm. don't know what's going on how are you supposed to manage that you know yeah. um yeah. But, and a lot of people, they're like, oh, I, I don't consider myself intuitive. I don't consider myself an empath. I'm like, okay, well, let me ask you, if you close your eyes and you're just sitting in an empty room with your eyes closed, can you tell if someone else comes in the room and quietly and if they're with you? It's that kind of sensation of someone's here with me. Someone's looking at me. Someone's in my auric field, for lack of a better word. Um and a lot of people surprise themselves. But mm. again, it's so subtle that if you're so preoccupied and going about your day or you have a loud brain and you're just always output, output, output on your own, um, you might just not notice it. Mm. Wow. Wow. How do you and I, I know you probably already said, but how how because I think people that that will listen to this will be like, you know, I kind of feel like that. I don't like the way that I feel. That's what mm -hmm. they're, because a lot of times, um, you know, I, I feel people's like nervous energy. Mm 
Mm-hmm. And, and um, I don't like it, especially when I'm working because I'm like nervous enough when I'm working and doing my thing. And then yeah. I feel somebody else, but um, how can, how can, or how do you, or how are you able to like, you can't turn it off, right? You just got to right. keep, you got to, how do you Is deal it with it? Focus on it. Yeah. Glass type of a thing. One thing about mediumship is it has, I've never encountered anything that has put me in those classrooms, you know, that personal growth classroom and challenging me, you know, oh, today you have to deal with your shyness. Oh, today you have to deal with what if, you know, the the person is mean. Oh, today you have to deal with this. And it's like, why does it have to be these things? Um, So I have done a lot of work and insight on exactly what you're kind of talking about as a nice bonus, you know? To me, I have had to really understand the concept that we have an internal world and we have an external world. Mm. And as empaths, we naturally are looking for that external input because it's coming in all the time. And then we just take it as gospel, you know, Mm. like this is how it is because this is how I feel. And it just kind of overruns us and we can even feel worse because we're kind of panicked about it and we don't want to feel those things. So anything you can do when you're not in those situations to reinforce that the external world is the external world. The internal world is yours. This Mm. is your playground, you know, and also realize that as you're bringing in that energy, you can influence the energy that's coming in. You can transmute it and send it back out as Mm. calm energy. You know, no one's energy is ever stronger than your own. We tend to take it in and accept it and do nothing with it. But if you were like, oh, this nervous energy, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to bring it into my body. Maybe I'll bring it into my heart or my solar plexus. And I'm just going to pour some love into it. And I'm going to send it back out or just Mm. neutralize it and send it back out, send it back out to the person. And also, you know, cultivate that within your internal um, system as well. So if you're feeling nervous, pour love into it, you know, and Mm. we're not really taught a lot of self-support and how to navigate things like this. Usually the, the lesson is, well, just toughen up and deal with it. And it's like, no, we, we can influence for the better. We can calm down a room. We can (sighs) cheer people up. We can get people excited about things And no, it's not always our responsibility to govern and manage those people, but even just unspokenly putting that energy back out there, Hmm. some people can pick up on that. And at least, you know, you're, you're working with it inside instead of feeling, oh gosh, it's happening again. I'm powerless to do anything. And again, to work on those concepts when you're not in that situation puts you in a better space to be centered when you are in the situation. And then afterwards, also get it off you, get it out of you, cleanse, you know, recenter so that you have those maintenance programs in place before, during, and after. My goodness, my goodness. And I know, you know, actually let's kind of, Hey, well, one thing is, and I think, Can you, so when you take their energy in, you take it in, you kind of accept it, but can you, you can transform it Mm -hmm. into being positive and send it back to them? Oh yeah. It's beautiful. Really? Absolutely. They gave it to you. Why can't you give it back? (laughs) That's a good point. It's, it's almost like, like, like the Care Bear stare almost right back at them. (laughs) I love that. Uh, how, how how can you do that? Because now people are like, hey, if I feel something from somebody, how can I how can I accept it? And then more importantly, send it back to them. Mm-hmm. You can right. visualize it. You can feel it or you can if you're not a good visualizer, just know, just trust 
Wow. And it's like, I'm sending this out here and I'm going to let it go. You know, it's not mine to keep, um, mm. but I can certainly influence it. Uh, there is an energy worker named Donna Eden who uh, just, I, I've listened to some of her talks and she had talked at one time um, as a guest on a, another podcast about how it, it used to alarm her to get energy from people because then it felt like it's part of you. It's stuck. It's influencing your, mm -hmm. you know, you're attached um, until she realized, yeah, you can transmute. And she had this visual of not sending it back necessarily, but you know, your root chakra is at the base of your tailbone. And mm -hmm. she visualized this spigot pouring that energy, that bad energy out and into the earth and the earth will just eat it up. Like the earth mm -hmm. will take anything we give it. Um, and so it really made me laugh when she had that analogy because I'm, whenever someone is like upset or needs to get rid of some energy, I'm like, do we need to get the butt spigot? <laughs> <laughs> you know? And if we can add humor to anything we're doing, humor and love, you know, those vibrations, they're not just corny uh, Hallmark sentiments. They, they yeah. really matter and they, they the really- strongest. Yeah. yeah. And we know it. We know it. Just like um, anyone who walks into the room in a bad mood and suddenly mm -hmm. the dinner is ruined for everyone. We all know yeah. what that's like. Can that be turned around and influenced by someone else who isn't angry like that person? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So it's about being aware of the energy and working with it and realizing your own sovereignty and having your own power to influence and play in the world and a lot of people don't even know what they're doing when they give you that energy so here you are intentionally doing something and that has to have just a, a more solid playing field to it wow wow now, so, now oh i was just gonna say now i i have now i i have almost an idea of when i do start feeling that really just taking it in and then sending it back mm -hmm. in a in a positive I really like that thank you yeah I think it's so simple but something we're just not talking about you know? yeah yeah and it's something to play with and and sometimes it'll be easier than others you know your own mood is going to influence it like if you are already feeling frazzled to begin with and to take in that energy you can just say you know what I know I have to help myself here and, you know, I do want to help the other person, but just having those conversations with yourself and that awareness of what is going on is so beneficial. Even if you feel like I'm just not good at it today, then it's like when you're out of the situation, well, it's time for a little bit of self-care, go for a walk in nature, you know, listen to your favorite music, scream, you know, whatever. Yeah. But, um, you know, there's, there's always something that can be done to shift things either during or after and, and all of that. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. So I have two quick questions. The first Yay. one, are you ever brought on with ghosts, you know, go, ghost investigators to go to haunted locations and what is that like if if you do it yeah i have been fortunate enough to do one so far with the paranormal road trippers uh mm -hmm. we went to a, ha a haunted inn in lake powell british columbia and we stayed at that haunted inn wow. and they put me in one of the most haunted rooms <laughs> for the three nights that they we were there and I do enjoy the investigations. Boy, it's so much different than doing a reading for someone, right? Because, you know, you you want to match energy with the, the location and there could be multiple things going on. Is it residual energy? Is it, you know, time slips? Is it is it uh, an echo of something? Is it, you know, an actual cognitive energy spirit um so many different aspects of it and then you're in an inn so there's energy signatures from everyone who 
works there and stayed there and all kinds of stuff. Um, I find so it, it kind of sounds like a really busy airport <laughs> oh, gosh. When you're, or being stuck in traffic when you're out of your home field advantage to use mm -hmm. a sports analogy, you know, like yeah. you're on, you're at an away game. You yeah. know, you don't know the crowd. You didn't sleep in your own bed the night before. <laughs> so your body is sort of not fully relaxed. And, you know, we're mind, body, and soul type of people. And when one of those aren't in line, mm -hmm. nothing works. So mm -hmm. tell us more about the end, what that experience was like. It was really neat just opening up to the space and we explored different, um, because it was an inn, we explored different like hotel rooms and the energy was different in every room or different location. And just being open to, hey, this is what I'm picking up. This is what I'm sensing. And then to have the paranormal investigation equipment is really neat too, because You've got your rim pods and everything. And if, if, if the electronics start going off your EMF detector and they seem to be responding to, you know, the conversations that are going on stuff like that, it's that whole different layer of, um, activity that's going on. That's really, really neat. And, um, the room that I stayed in, I was getting the impression that there was a man who would pace back and forth, pace back and forth. Uh, perhaps while smoking and that's how he thought that's how he was thinking and the room was like a bedroom and a bathroom and I'm like he's going back and forth here he's going back and forth here and it turns out that um, the inn used to be a courthouse and that was his office so there wow. would be perhaps that pacing back and forth and while we were in the room just sitting on the bed all of a sudden my mouth just filled up with this intense tobacco taste. It was, it was awful. It was like, I ate five cigarettes or something. I, mm. I mean like, Oh my gosh, this is terrible. Blah. Okay. He's here. <laughs> wow. Um, and it lasted for about 10 minutes. And then that night, since we were staying in that room, my partner and I, we kind of agreed. We don't want, I, I like to set up house rules. I don't want to be woken up in the middle of the night. That's mm -hmm. not a great way to contact me. So I'm like, hey, we're in your space. Please leave us alone while we sleep. And we're very grateful to share the space. Thanks for letting us in. Um, but let's talk tomorrow. And I even went to bed wearing a Ouija board shirt. You know, <laughs> I'm like, <Whoa. laughs> and uh, in the middle of the night, I woke up to that taste again. Oh, wow. And it was, it flooded in really strong. And I, I was waking up and I wasn't even conscious yet when my, the first part of my brain that came on went, no, and it immediately disappeared. And I'm like, okay, great. And I went back to sleep. <laughs> wow. Wow. You know, it's interesting. You answered something I was going to ask before about the cigarettes. I was going to say, when you're doing a reading and someone talks about, you know, you get the thing about a grandmother baking, mm -hmm. do you get the taste of what the grandmother would bake or something along the, or like a drink they like? Does some of that stuff come through during the reading? Not every time, but when it does, it's fascinating. I did a reading a couple of weeks ago where uh, the spirit was showing me like a, a VFW. Um, and I'm like, oh, he used to go here. And then all of a sudden, like I saw this real pale beer and I, and I could taste it. And I'm like, this is the worst beer ever. And I said to my sitter, I go, did he, did he drink? Did he drink beer? Oh, you wouldn't like this beer. This beer is awful. And she said, he used to drink a long time ago, but he had a problem and he felt like he shouldn't drink anymore. So no, he didn't drink. And then she said, but he would drink fake beer. I'm like, that's exactly yeah. what it okay. is. It's O'Doul's. It's the gross oh, fake goodness. beer. <laughs> <laughs> 
when you when you go into these things, I just want to apologize to our corporate sponsor I'm or doors. Oh, right. <laughs> right, right. Please, please keep paying our rent. <laughs> when, okay. Maybe it's an acquired taste. <laughs> right. Yes. Uh, Jeff, when you go into these things, like like your um your paranormal visit um to the end but also when you do your readings which by the way this kind of goes without saying but i think it needs to be said that 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 no matter wherever you're listening to this they can contact you and do you do readings by zoom i do okay i do yeah mo the majority of my readings are online uh, which is odd for me. I started out doing uh, tarot readings many decades ago, and it was always in person. And then when the pandemic hit, I was at a place in life where I'm like, you know what, I'm going to put myself out there. I'm going to offer tarot readings, I'm going to offer them online. And I thought at first, what's that going to be like? It's going to be so weird not having the person's physical energy with me. And I realized then that, yes, it's different, but it still works. Wow. And then when I started mediumship, um, it's I've only been doing it for about three or four years now. So guess what? Pandemic. And so the majority of my readings are online. They're, they're not in person. And it's weird that for me to think about doing readings, medium readings in person is now the foreign thing to me. Huh. But I know that if I have the opportunity to do that, I'm, I may be flooded with even more information. And that could be really neat to just see how that goes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and it is worth noting that they can schedule, right, um, mm -hmm. uh, book uh readings with you mm -hmm. on your your um website which is i talk to ghost.com which is and which the, is really cool i like that um the link we, to all of that will be in the description and when the episode goes up jennifer will definitely be tagged so you could look into booking a reading absolutely oh, thank, thank you absolutely. so much you're welcome um when you do do readings you said do do he do, did. Wait, what is it? <laughs> he I said, said doo doo. Uh, <laughs> when, you, when you read, <laughs> when you do readings, um, we're all old and we still laugh at that. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, Eric is a hundred, so he just yes. he just turned a hundred uh, a couple weeks ago. Congratulations! Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um how how important is it for you? Or is it to not have much information about who yeah. you're reading? Yeah, yeah. I, my, my logical brain hates it, but I prefer a blank slate. Mm. Because, you know, and of course my logical brain wants some kind of lead, but you run into the danger of, trying to fill in the blanks mm. and that's not working in the right space. So uh, a lot of times I, I want a blank slate. Usually I just have, I have someone's first name, uh, my client, I have their first name. I don't even know what they look like. And sometimes it's like, gosh, if I could see a picture of them, but I don't even want to ask anyone for anything, Yeah, you know? And I've had readings where someone will say, I would like to connect with my mom and I sit down and open the space and I'm like, well, there's a man here mm. and he's, he's very thoughtful, very kind, really humor is everything. And he has this teacher vibe to him. He has humor in everything he does. And it really helped him teach um, what he was doing. And then, you know, my sitter immediately is like, oh my gosh, that's my mom's best friend who just passed. Oh, I know they're um, together. And like, I had no idea, but I trusted, even though she said she wanted to connect with her mom, give the information you get and see where it takes you. Sure. I'm a human being. Um, using my human body, information could get distorted or just be wrong. 
I'm never a hundred percent right. And no one should expect that of themselves, but to give the information and just say, Hey, and if it's, if it, you can't connect it, that's okay. Uh, I can sit with it and try and figure out what am I missing? What am I translating wrong? Or we can just put a pin in it and move on to the next thing. And one of my favorite aspects of doing a reading is when my sitter, I tell them something and they don't know. And then they, after the reading, they have to go investigate and they find wow. out that it's true. And oh, it's wow. like, yes, that is so fun because that That's means awesome. I'm not reading them um, right. being told, yeah. you know, it's just really neat. Wow, that's so fascinating. It blows my it's mind. Amazing. It is. It's insane. Wow. Right? I'm right there with you. I'm <laughs> like, how is this possible? But it is possible. So I got to pay attention. I got to keep putting myself out there. I got to keep doing it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it it sounds like, because I think, and, and this is a good thing about creatives, right? As a creative person. And I, 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 I absolutely know. Jennifer, that you're a very creative person, it Definitely. seems like, um, because because you have to eventually, as a creative, and it sounds like you have it down pat, but you have to trust yourself. Mm. You have to trust how you feel. Um, is that because when you trust yourself, is that your true self trying to to tell you? And then all of a sudden it goes, no, 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 that can't be. Yeah. Is, is that, is that a thing where yeah. when you, when you, when you, when you fully trust yourself and you let that take over you and it kind of takes you where it wants to go, that is fully like being in the moment. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And again, that's one of those lessons that mediumship has certainly demanded that I work on is to trust myself and to have faith in in what I'm doing or how I'm doing it and also to know that I'm I'm just a component in this for me to doubt is an insult to the spirit world mm -hmm. <laughs> and everyone involved because I'm me to take all ownership of it and to critique it or judge it uh, it's kind of insulting to to everyone involved. And uh, to let all of that go is certainly a hard thing to do. And I am self-critical. I am judgmental with myself. Of course, I analyze every reading. And then I'm like, okay, what can I learn from this? Anything else, I, I need to accept it. And who am I to say what it should have looked like or how it should have been? Um, I'm not here to filter things out and only deliver the best of what I think is most important. It's not my relationship. It's, it's not my reading. Yeah. The most important thing to me is that my sitter gets the reading that they need. Mm -hmm. And I try not to put the pressure on myself for that, but it is so important. And I don't want to be inaccurate. I always say, I don't want to put holes in their parachute, but yeah, but you just, you have to trust yeah. and, you know, you're going to get the occasional no, but I'm not shooting down the parachute. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I want to get into how I discovered you and that okay. is the podcast. So I love the way it's set up because it's the spooky stories, mm -hmm. reading, and then the someone who's listening. Mm-hmm. So explain that to everybody in more detail. <laughs> sure. Well, I used to do a podcast called Odd Tonic with my partner, and it was a very large production lift. We really wanted it to be theater of the mind, kind of paranormal meets NPR. The, the bar for production quality yeah. was really, really up there. Yeah, that's called Odd Tonic. And when the pandemic hit, um, we were already kind of limping along. It was a full-time job for both of us to get yeah. this podcast out. And eventually we just kind of, we put it on hiatus. We haven't been able to pick it back up. There's just not enough time in the day to produce something like that uh, for free when you have a, 
earthly responsibilities. Yeah, yeah. But I missed it. And I, and I, I knew I wanted to do a paranormal podcast. And I thought, I'm going to tell ghost stories. And it's going to be as small or short as it needs to be because I don't want to have to put it back down. And so the first couple of episodes, I think maybe the first 12 episodes are my narrated ghost stories, some personal stories about paranormal experiences or how I realized I was a medium, that sort of thing. And the funny thing is before I started the podcast, I'm backing out of my driveway one day and I get the mental suggestion, why not call it I Talk to Ghosts? And I'm like, I love that. I love that. And it was before I was a medium. Oh, wow. And I told my partner, I'm like, I'm going to call it I Talk to Ghosts. And he likes, he's like, I love that. But do you? Um, wow. <laughs> and 12 episodes in at that point, it took me so long to get this podcast going. At that point, he was like, by episode 12, I had been developing mediumship behind the scenes. And he's like, you got to share your readings on the show. And of course, my logical brain freaked out. And I'm like, no, no, there's no way. Okay, how? All right. Yes. And right around that time uh, when we were developing that concept, I also got the mental suggestion that why not do a message from the spirits just open the space for someone listening to the podcast. And at first I thought, oh, if I don't have a reading this week, it could just be substituted with this. But I always seem to have a reading for the week. Uh, so I do both. And um, to have someone contact me and said, I was listening and I think this is my grandpa or mm. I was listening, I think this is my best friend. We'll go on and, and maybe do a full reading for the podcast or we'll just kind of talk about it or we'll do a private reading. But it's amazing to me that usually only one person claims it and there's still some out there that haven't been claimed. Wow. And it's like, wow, how many years from now is someone going to line up and listen to this? Yeah. And wow. it's going to be a message for them. You know, I describe who's coming in for me, parts of their personality. I try to get like little details that come in like, oh, they were always carrying this coffee cup around with them. Or, oh, they always bit their nails, you know, some some kind of personal tie in details. And then it's like, OK, what's the message for the person listening? What do they need to know? And all of my readings, when I do a, a reading for anyone, I had oh, I always ask from the collective, from the spirit world, what it, what does my sitter need to hear right now? You know, mm. so I like to include messages as well. So it's not just evidence. It's communication that's um, amazing that's i gotta say the story stuff is top notch thank you oh you can go on now larry sorry about that no i just i find it fascinating because i mean that is the epitome of of being creative and doing what you do and making it like so professional and it sounds absolutely amazing. So what I'll, I'll tell everybody, once, once you listen to this episode, you have to go and you have to search for I Talk to Ghosts. Where, Jennifer, where is it on every podcast platform? It is. It's on Apple Podcasts. It's on Spotify. And most podcast apps, they're, they're aggregators for, for Apple Podcasts. So it's, it should be spread out. Okay. anywhere on a, a podcast app and i also have a, a video youtube channel as well oh wow i wow. wasn't aware of that it's funny wow. Um, wow. i listen to it on audible because when i listen to it on spotify it'll mm -hmm. go to another podcast when the episode's done mm -hmm. and i like you know i like marathoning stuff that i like yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah. Well, Jennifer, we just want to thank you so much for coming on the show today. And I've got a feeling there might be some more visits. Yeah. We seem to all gel pretty well. It was great yeah. having you on. Yeah. Yeah. So That's everyone, great. if yes. you want to speak with Jennifer, book a reading or anything of that nature, links will be in the description and links to her social media. 
Well, Jennifer, thank you so much for coming on. And hey, remember everybody, support our troops.